If everyone here today was to bring one person to the Lord this week, can you imagine the rejoicing in heaven? The Bible says rejoicing in the presence of the angels in heaven over one sinner that repents and and, uh, be able to make heaven rejoice. Uh, We can't save anyone, but we definitely can present them to the Savior and uh, uh, bring them to Jesus that he might save them. Uh, This time, junior church can be dismissed uh, downstairs. And I uh, appreciate Miss Sarai for uh, teaching the kids. And let's go ahead and turn our Bibles to Acts chapter number one. I do have a uh, certificate here for Leela, and uh, she's the newest member of the church. It says, upon your testimony of salvation, having followed the Lord in obedience by baptism and agreeing with our articles of faith, you were united with the Bible Baptist Church of Coquille on the 14th day of June, 2015. And uh, and so it's uh, here. She just got baptized a couple weeks ago, and so we have a certificate for you. Amen. Praise the Lord for her coming and joining the church, and then also her faithfulness in church. We appreciate you. And, uh, Acts chapter number one. We've been looking at this uh, particular chapter, and and uh, the Lord just uh, keeps uh, bringing messages right from here. And uh, so we're down in verse number fifteen. Uh, this morning, uh, the the book of Acts is the history of the New Testament church. As it began, the apostles were uh, given the command, the instruction to be witnesses unto him, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world. And yet they were to go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit of promise to come. And uh, uh, Jesus Christ, as he ascended up into heaven and he left them with the uh, the uh, great commission to reach the world. The Bible says to preach the gospel to every creature. And so we have here that in, in Acts chapter one, uh, the uh, beginning of uh, not the beginning of because the New Testament church began with Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the head of the church. And of course, he is uh, the one it's founded upon. Uh, but uh, here we have the time after Christ has left. Now they're going to uh, to begin to uh, to uh, carry out uh, this uh, great commission or command that has been given uh, by by uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in reaching the world. And so you see here the church started in Jerusalem and and uh, and then from that other churches begin to uh, to uh, start out as 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 believers spread abroad and as the apostles go out preaching. And and, uh, and so we find the Apostle Paul, uh, most of Acts entailing his uh, history of the church. And so we have the beginning right here uh, of uh, this uh, New Testament up to this point. Uh, again, the the the, Isra- the Jewish people have been God's chosen people. God's been de- dealing with the world through them, and God's desire was all the way back to Abraham was that all nations be blessed uh, through him, and and uh, and so uh, so he was using the nation of Israel for that. Uh, but you have uh, for a a time period what's called the age of the church. You, you have this uh, or or age of grace. You have this period of time that uh, God turns from Israel. Uh, he's not done with them because the Bible says he's going to turn back to them. Read about that in Revelations. But uh, but uh, he has uh, turned to deal with through the church. It's through the churches, uh, through the Christians that God reaches the world uh, today. And praise the Lord, the gospel came to the Gentiles because I am one. And I, I praise the Lord that I get to be saved, although no longer Jew nor Gentile, Christian, uh, saved in Christ. And and uh, so as we uh, look at uh, Acts chapter number one, beginning in verse number 15, uh, so we, we left off verse 14 last week. Verse number 15, the Bible says that in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said uh, and, and said uh, and then parentheses there, the number of names together were about one hundred and twenty. So the one hundred and twenty initial believers that started that church there in, in uh, Jerusalem. Verse 16, men and brethren, this scripture must have need must needs have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man, speaking of Judas, purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in the proper tongue Akeldama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. 
and his bishopric let another take now you have that passage back in psalms who would have considered this is what it was speaking of but that uh, field actually became the the potter's field it was where they uh, they would uh, bury uh, the the poor those that did not have money to uh, be able to get a tomb and and uh, and such and 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 so again it never did become a piece of property that anybody ever dwelt in Uh, but yet purchased with that uh, the funds that uh, he got for betraying christ and and uh, uh, here in verse uh, number uh, 20 against for is written in the book of Psalms let his habitation be desolate let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of the ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, And the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for, uh, again this morning, thank you for the the, uh, New Testament church. Uh, Father, thank you for the gospel going to all nations. Uh, Lord, today there's uh, literally all over uh, this world uh, churches, congregations of believers that regularly gather together to worship you and and to be lighthouses in their communities of the gospel. Uh, and yet, Lord, there's many churches closing their doors. And, and uh, there's uh, buildings that are just empty now because of, of uh, the hardness in people's hearts and turning away from you. Father, I pray that we'd see more churches. Uh, Lord, that we'd just see the gospel go to the uttermost parts of the world. And, and uh, Father, just ask that you would uh, bless uh, today in the message. And, and uh, Lord, the, the lesson before us, that you would speak to our hearts. Encourage us uh, about this week. Thank you for our church. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as we look at these passage and, and just studying through it and, and uh, some different uh, things came to mind, I'd like to, uh, to, to speak of this morning. We have the beginning of the, 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 uh, uh, the uh, New Testament uh, church age, the time after Christ has, has left. Again, I don't say the beginning of the church because Jesus Christ uh, is, uh, uh, of course, the uh, founder of the church, and, and uh, you'll find uh, him discipling disciples and baptizing and, and all those things that a church does uh, there in uh, in the uh, Gospels. But uh, but here, uh, once Christ has gone, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, church continuing to function. And and so we find here in uh, starting out with 120 members that gather together there in the upper room and and uh, they're waiting upon the Holy Spirit to come. Uh, we looked at last week corporate prayer, the importance of. And uh, just a uh, uh, year week before last, but been excited about this. I just wanted to share with you last last Wednesday night uh, as a uh, Wednesday nights is our prayer service. And and uh, so we're devoting more time to uh, to prayer. So many uh, churches have, have stopped having Wednesday night services or they have a Bible study instead. And and, uh, you know, when is it that churches gather and pray together? Uh, when is it that a church gathers and prays corporately together? And and uh, and yet we find the instruction for that. And right here at the beginning, uh, you know, their their first service together was a prayer service. And uh, they uh, we don't know how long the Bible says in those days. So uh, so it was a, a length of time that they uh, that they had this uh, this prayer meeting together in the upper room. But uh, but again, at uh, Wednesday night, we, we prayed for and one of the requests we asked for the jail service. Uh, and it just seems to uh, there with. Uh, scheduling on Friday and stuff that, uh, you know, go up there. And, of course, uh, initially they said, uh, you know, two to three. Well, I went at two. And, and uh, they said, well, that won't work. It's, you know, it got to be 2.15. And, and, and so I uh, uh, stood around and waited till 2.15 and, and then went in. And, and, and about 15, 20 minutes into the service, they said, okay, that's it. Like, well, uh, we just got to point one. And, uh, you know, and it, it is a preaching service. We sing songs and we, uh, you know, have a, have a, a message and an invitation. And, and, uh, and so, uh, uh, so anyway, it got cut short. And, and, and so they, uh, next week they said, why don't you go ahead and wait till, uh, you know, uh, 2.15 to come and, and we'll, we'll give you the uh, 2.15 to 3. And, 
and he still got 45 minutes for the service. And and so uh, I went at 2:15. I said, "Well, we're we're still busy with the room. We have to wait till 2:30." So I stood around, waited till 2:30, and and uh, same thing. Got in, and started preaching, and and uh, they they cut the service short. And and uh, and so I went up and talked to uh, the guards and and uh, to uh, the uh, sergeant up at the jail, and and he said. Uh, you know that uh, you know what we'll, we'll we'll schedule it in. We will give you from two thirty to three thirty. So you'll have a whole hour. Well, this is this is you know great, and and uh, and so we've I mean we've been doing this service for uh, about eighteen years now, and uh, and and that we we've been able to have that that service there in the jail, and 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 so it's not like it's a a, a last minute thought or something, but uh, but anyway. Uh, and and so I went up there at at uh, two two thirty and and got into uh, you know uh, in at two thirty okay everything's gonna you know work great now and and uh, three o'clock they said oh that's it you're done and uh, and of course that's that's about the, I mean uh, we like to sing and you get the song service in a little bit and and uh, uh, and but knowing that I just would have skipped the you know uh, just uh, one quick song and, and into the message but uh, but anyway uh, so so I asked last Wednesday night the church would pray and uh, just asked the Lord to work on. Uh, the, uh, the 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 jail's hearts and and uh, the men's hearts and, and and such and and went up there this week two thirty right in praise the Lord and uh, uh, but uh, had to stand around and wait in the room because they uh, uh, they uh, just uh, had uh, some some uh, planning things again and getting them in and uh, so they let them come in after about ten minutes uh, it's like uh oh now we're really you know cutting the service down and and uh, and so I uh, I got to sing I got to preach and and they let me go late. And uh, and then uh, started uh, boxing up the Bibles and and uh, Bible study material and stuff that was left over to, uh, you know, bring it back to the church. And, and all of a sudden the guard comes over the speaker and he says, uh, we got another group coming. Uh, really? Praise the Lord. I shouldn't be surprised, but I was. We actually had two services and got to preach the full message invitation. Uh, and uh, uh, just uh, that's an answer to prayer. Uh, I couldn't work it out. I, I tried to. Uh, you know, and, and uh, but that's just the Lord. And so praise the Lord for for uh, corporate prayers. The church comes together in prayer. God does answer those prayers. And and uh, I'm excited about Wednesday nights, uh, excited about the Wednesday night prayer service. And and I've been having a service on uh, a prayer service on Thursday night at four thirty also and uh, four thirty to five. But uh, but again, just excited to see what God does through prayer. And and here's they met together and they prayed and and uh, in the process as they're praying. Uh, the Bible says that God brings a passage of Scripture to Peter's mind, uh, a passage of Scripture to Peter's mind. And and uh, that passage uh, given from Psalms and uh, it, it's actually uh, and we're not going to look look to it at this time. But uh, but it actually is back in and I uh, wrote it down here. Psalms uh, 69, 35 and then also Psalm 109, verse eight. Uh, but the Holy Spirit just brings that to Peter's mind that, uh, you know, there is. As uh, Judas uh, went out and hung himself and and uh, some say he didn't use a very strong rope because the Bible says that he fell, uh, you know, there. And, and of course, uh, just don't think too much about it. But his body broke open. And, and anyway, that's why they called it the field of blood. But uh, but as as uh, you know, uh, there is as uh, those things took place, all of a sudden that that a Holy Spirit just speaking to Peter's mind as they're as they're uh, there in the congregation. And and uh, he, he shares with him, he said, you know, there's supposed to be someone else is supposed to take Judas's spot. Uh, that uh, the, the the Bible says that uh, that uh, he is going to, uh, you know, uh, there uh, no man take his habitation. He's going to be cut off and and uh, that another is going to take his bishopric. And so uh, so someone else uh, needs to uh, take that spot. And the Holy Spirit led there with brother P- uh, with uh, brother Peter. And and he uh, uh, and so he led the congregation uh, and uh, there and, and saying we, we need to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, appoint someone to that spot. And so they began to. Uh, investigate of the 120 that were there uh, were there any qualified and it happened to be there was two in order to be an apostle you had to be there at uh, Christ's baptism and, and throughout his ministry and and uh, so it wasn't just the uh, apostles that were following Christ but there were two other uh, men that also uh, could fulfill that uh, that position and, and so they bring those two before them and and uh, and then uh, they pray and they uh, they vote and and of course Matthias becomes the apostle that replaces uh, Judas that there's still 12 apostles one for each tribe of of Israel and one to sit upon those 12 uh, tribes or 12 thrones judging the nation of Israel and the millennial kingdom and anyway there's a reason for it all but uh, but uh, here's we uh, as we uh, look at this and and uh, you know the first thing I see in this passage we look at this morning is a local church business meeting you ever heard about those local church business meetings 
uh, say, what are those? Those are those fights, you know, uh, the fights. And, and, and I've heard about those things. Praise the Lord, our church has never had one of those things. But, uh, but you know, I hear about the, uh, the uh, business meetings. You get together and, and vote on things. Uh, and, uh, and I do believe, and of course, as, as Baptists, we, uh, we have a biblical uh, you know, uh, stand for that. But I do believe a democracy, uh, a democracy uh, under a theocracy. Uh, there's one king, isn't there? Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says Jesus is the head of the church. No convention or that's why we're independent Baptist. Uh, we, uh, uh, you know, we don't hold to an outside hierarchy. There's no uh, bishops and and uh, cardinals and, and whatever over the church. It's, it's Jesus Christ, his word that governs the church. And uh, and so this this church is answerable to Jesus Christ. And that's the way it was in the New Testament, too. And uh, we, we find here uh, Peter, who is the appointed uh, leader of uh, of that church. Uh, the Bible says that he, he calls a business meeting. How does he do it? With the word of God he says, you know, the Bible says I appreciate the New Testament church as it started out. Can you just get pictured as baby believers, new Christians. And uh, uh, they had the nerve to say the Bible says. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and uh, I mean, that's 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 a pretty simple faith, isn't it? Uh, the Bible says and and uh, he says, you know, the Bible says that another is supposed to take uh, his, his spot. And and uh, and so uh, so uh, we need it. We need to appoint someone. Uh, you know, that's that's what the Bible says to do. And, and so we uh, we just need to do what the uh, what the Bible says. And 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 so he uh, he calls together a business meeting. The congregations there are the 120 uh, meeting together. And and uh, we, we, we find here a model for the local church uh, given. Uh, notice uh, there in verse uh, 21 again, it says, Wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness of this his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. Uh, well, you have two. How can we come uh, to one? Uh, notice the Bible says, verse 24, they prayed. Isn't that a good thing to do before a business meeting? Uh, pray about a decision. The Bible says they prayed for wisdom. It says, and they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And and, uh, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, they had the Urim and Thummim, uh, the Urim and Thummim. And and uh, nobody knows exactly what it is. And and uh, because it's it's been lost, and there's no record of it. Uh, just that the Bible says there's an Urim and Thummim and and how it worked. But it was how God showed his will. Uh, and uh, through the, the high priest, he would use this Urim and Thummim, whatever that was. And and uh, some believe because there was uh, there was a. Uh, uh, gems on the on the breastplate of the high priest that uh, that were all different colors representing the different tribes and such that uh, that God would uh, because of the uh, the word Urim meaning lights uh, that God would uh, in in some way uh, you know uh, use the the uh, the uh, thumb and uh, the Urim and thumb and and uh, you know light up and, and point uh, at uh, at uh, you know uh, which uh, which uh, tribe and then which individual and such and and uh, but uh, but again how how to uh, know the will of God and and so in the Old Testament and, and amongst the nation of Israel that's how they determined uh, the will of God or through miracles. Uh, well, how how do they do it in the New Testament by a vote? Uh, by a vote, how how can that uh, you know and and of course uh, the belief in the New Testament church every member of the New Testament church must. Uh, must uh, first be saved. Uh, and then those that are saved are in obedience to Christ, they're baptized. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're led of the Holy Spirit of God. And, uh, and so why is it that we vote on things? By the way, we never vote on Scripture. Notice there, Peter didn't say, uh, you know, this is what the Bible says, should we have a vote on it? Uh, you never vote on what the Bible says. Uh, I don't want to change our appearance and whatever. It's really hard for me not to get in the flesh today. But we don't vote on whether homosexuality and uh, same-sex marriage is right or not. Uh, the Bible's clear. Uh, and uh, for, for the nation and, and uh, you know, to see the White House in rainbow colors. And enough said on that today. That's uh, probably a message when I'm not so much in the, in the flesh on the issue. But, uh, but uh, uh, just, uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, saddening for our, uh, kind of scary 
uh, for our nation to uh, to to uh, come to a place where we would would just thumb our uh, our nose at God and and uh, you know and and rejoice over something like that. But uh, but uh, enough said there. I believe God loves sinners and God died. Uh, Jesus died for all sin and I believe that God would save any sinner. And uh, uh, and, but but sin doesn't give us special uh, special rights. Uh, sin actually uh, has consequences. And uh, but uh, but but uh, anyway, back. Uh, sorry about that. I just uh, you know I, I know it's in my heart, but uh, God didn't direct me to preach on. He pre- gave me preach on this this morning. So uh, so 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 just back. Uh, but 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 here, notice that the Bible says that they prayed on it, and then they trusted God to guide them. The idea of a democracy in, in a church is, uh, you know, you're, you are going to get some people that maybe aren't following the Lord in a church at any given time. Uh, I, uh, you know, in, in my uh, my uh, walk with the Lord, there's times that, you know, I'm up here and uh, I'm just excited about the Lord and just uh, being obedient to him and doing what. Uh, but then then there's times that, you know, my uh, my faith and and, uh, uh, you know, whatever's going on in my life, you know, I'm, I'm down here someplace or whatever and. And uh, but but the idea is as as a church, uh, as we vote on something that uh, the majority should be up here someplace if it's a living New Testament church. Uh, And so uh, as as we vote on things, well, the majority, uh, you know, is going to be able to uh, demonstrate the will of God uh, in a matter. And uh, and so here, uh, you know, again, he doesn't say let's vote on the Bible. Uh, He says here it's clearly scriptural. Uh, that uh, someone is, is to be appointed to take Judas's place. Uh, the Holy Spirit's about ready to come. We're about ready to head out in, in ministry. And, and, <clears throat> and so someone needs to take that place. And, and uh, so, they, uh, so they found two men qualified. Now, how do we determine which one is the servant of God? Well, couldn't God just open up heaven and say that's the one? You know, they've just gone from a time where Jesus Christ was right there with them. And that's what they did. They just turned around and said, uh, you know, which one, Jesus? And, and uh, of course, Jesus chose them one by one, didn't he? In fact, all the other 11 apostles were specifically chosen by Jesus Christ. Now, all of a sudden, we find the church choosing. Uh, and, uh, and, and why? Because God works through the local New Testament church. Uh, if, if you look at, uh, you know, a scripture, that's what scripture teaches. The church is the body of Christ. And, uh, and so as Christ works upon uh, this uh, in this world, he works through his body. Christ is the head. And uh, this this local church is the body of Christ in this section of the world that uh, that God functions through and and uh, as uh, as he directs. And and, uh, you know, uh, couldn't there be a better way to do it? I don't know. I know God's, you know, God. And uh, that's what God says is is that he works through and and uh, and directs through the the local church. And and so uh, here we find God beginning to uh, to uh, form and, and set up the form for a New Testament church and. And so the Bible says the congregation, Peter didn't have any more votes than anybody else. You say the apostle Peter, uh, he didn't have any more votes than anybody else. The Bible says they all cast their lots. Uh, men and women, the Bible says we're there, cast their lots. And, and uh, all 120 uh, there had, had a say in it. And, and, of course, the Bible says that it became clear that it was Matthias. It doesn't say whether it was 90 percent or 75 percent or 100 percent. It just says that uh, it was clear that Matthias was the one that God chose. Uh, how do you know that? Because the church voted it. We just read in Matthew chapter number 18, if two of you agree in, in, on earth and it's you know established in heaven and, and uh, we understand that doesn't mean we can rewrite scripture. Uh, but on decisions that we, uh, you know, the Bible doesn't say uh, up to that point that Matthias was going to be the one. Uh, God hasn't spoke on the issue of which one. It was up to the church to uh, determine uh, what God's will in the matter was, and so they they voted. Find a perfect model for a New Testament business meeting, and uh, as we uh, do from time to time, uh, get together and 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 uh, uh, have to uh, vote on on uh, issues and things, and and of course the model being established. But what I want to look at uh, here as we look at this passage this morning, there's so much here we could look at, uh, but verse number 15 again. Verse 15, the Bible says, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. This is what Peter said, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them 
that took Jesus. Uh, and of course, we we looked at already, but uh, in the Psalms, the Old Testament, back in the days of David, God had spoke about Judas. And so uh, just the uh, uh, the uh, title of the message this morning, evidence of things not seen, evidence of things not seen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that you just bless the, the message this morning and the Lord, as with every passage of Scripture, there's so much that uh, could be uh, brought up and and uh, uh, spoke on that your Holy Spirit would direct this morning. And, and uh, Lord, as we uh, look into your word today, uh, Father, I pray that uh, you uh, would be glorified. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Um, evidence of things not seen. Where does that come from? Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, if you want to write it down. Hebrews 11, one says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Uh, there is no no blind faith in the matter. So often you hear people say, oh, Christians, they live by blind faith. It's not blind faith. It's faith in the word of God, uh, the evidence of things not seen. Now, there's so much that we can't, uh, you know, I can't see. I, I can't see the future of my kids, but I can see how to raise them. And trust God for the future of my kids. And I do it by faith. And I don't do it by statistics. And I don't do it by, uh, you know, uh, uh, by uh, professors in some college someplace or somebody who wrote a book. I, uh, I do it by faith because God said it. I believe it's going to work out. Whether I agree with the outcome or not, uh, still I believe that it's the best way to do it because the creator who designed me said to do it uh, this way. And, and, and so I, uh, you know, I, I, I do it by faith. Faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Uh, hold your place right there and look at Psalm 41. Psalm 41. Here in Psalm 41, this is in the, the days of David. David wrote a majority of the Psalms. Uh, they were songs that they sang in, in worship of the Lord. And... Uh, these particular psalms that we find in this book, they were inspired of God. And so it's different than maybe a lot of like our hymns and such that are, uh, you know, someone's testimony and time they spend with God. Will they write a hymn and just uh, rejoicing in him and and uh, the psalms, they're inspired. These these are God's word and uh, uh, God given. And 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 here in Psalm chapter number 41. And. Uh, well, I'm in 49, but uh, 41, verse 9. Notice the Bible says, Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Uh, we find all the way back in the days of David, God prophesying about Judas, about this event to take place, all the way back in the days of of David, uh, you ever had someone come to you and say, uh, you know, this is just a book written by men. Uh, it's just a book written by men. I always try to share with people, you know, if I take a pen and I write something, literally you could say this pen wrote it, right? But if I'm going to be honest, no, Bruce Perkins wrote it. He moved the pen. God moved those men to write the things that were uh, in the word of God. It is the word of God. How do you know that? You know, the greatest uh, evidence of the things not seen is the prophecies in the Bible. Uh, you can go through the Bible and see thousands of things God uh, prophesied about. Uh, you know, he prophesied to the time that Christ was going to be crucified. Uh, he, he prophesied to the, you know, the, the, the point of, of uh, not only, uh, you know, uh, Christ being crucified but before that, his birth, where he was going to be born of what nation he's going to be born, of what lineage he's going to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, born from, how he's going to be born of a virgin. I mean, you go on, there's, there's, there's thousands of prophecies in, this, the, in the word of God that have, have uh, taken place exactly as were said. Judas is just one of those. Uh, the Bible spoke of, uh, you know, and, and, and I don't want to uh, go on and on, but uh, you know that, that Jesus would even be uh, crucified amongst two thieves and buried in a rich man's tomb, a borrowed tomb. Uh, and, uh, and, and as you, you look at the prophecies and, and uh, as, as we, uh, uh, you know, uh, look at, at faith, and, and the Bible says here that uh, all of a sudden, uh, as they're in this prayer meeting, Peter all of a sudden recognizes they've just gotten the message. Judas 
just uh, you know hung himself and he uh, and, and the rope broke and he fell down and is uh, anyway uh, uh, there and and, and uh, that field you know now has become the potter's field and and uh, the the, the uh, Asel, a- Akel Dama, the the uh, field of blood and and uh, and so as he's as he's sharing boy this is what the Bible was talking about this is what the Bible was talking about look at at uh, John chapter number thirteen. John chapter number 13. 13. John chapter number 13. Here in John chapter number 13 and verse number 18. As Jesus is there with his disciples and verse number 18, the Bible says, I speak not of you all. Verse 17, he says, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Uh, But verse 18, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. Psalms 41, 9. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. So he just told them, one of you is going to betray me. One of you is a false pseudo-Christian, not really saved. Uh, there of the 12 apostles, in fact, you find it the, uh, there at the, 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 the uh, Last Supper that, uh, you know, they begin to question and, and say, and, and uh, Peter, of course, right away says, Lord, is it I? Is it I? They begin to ask. Even Judas, he knows it's him, but he still says, is it I? And the Lord said, he who dips his bread in the, in the cup with me, uh, that is him. And right away, the Bible says right after that, Judas dips his bread in the cup uh, with, with Jesus. And, of course, Jesus tells him, go and do that, which you've uh, planned to do, and do it quickly. Uh, go betray me. And uh, it was a fulfillment of prophecy of scripture and and here uh, Jesus is telling them you know uh, not not all of you uh it says there's one of you that is going to fulfill Psalms 41:9 uh he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me look at verse 19 now i tell you before it come there's a reason that i'm prophesying this there's a reason that i'm sharing with you this is going to happen it says now i tell you before i come that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. One of the greatest evidences we have that God is who he said he was, and Jesus Christ is the Savior, is prophecy. That God said these things are going to happen exactly, like, and then they did. Only God can know the end from the beginning. Man can try to make it happen. Uh, you know, even the devil doesn't know the end from the beginning. Uh, you talk about those that go to fortune tellers and, you know, all that kind of, of uh, demonic stuff that they get involved in. And, and uh, sometimes it takes place and sometimes it doesn't because the devil does make things happen as they're happening. But uh, but uh, uh, again, uh, he's not accurate 100 percent of the time. But God is uh, it's it, it's evidence to the word of God that the word of God is uh, is true. Uh, look at John chapter two. John chapter two. It's important for Christians to read their Bible. It increases our faith. Look at John chapter 2, verse 22. It says here in verse 22, When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture, and the word which Jesus had said. Well, didn't they already believe in him? They did, didn't they? But, you know, here he's talking about, he said to the priests, the three, uh, you know, uh, there that you destroy this temple, and in three days I'm going to raise it up again. And they say, 40 and six years was this temple in the building. That'll raise it up in three days. They're talking about the physical temple uh, there of Herod uh, in, in, in their day. And, and, uh, but the Bible goes on to say, but this he spake of his body. Uh, destroy this temple and in three days I'm going to raise it up again and, and so when he rose from the grave the Bible says the disciples said that they remembered that he had said this he had said he was going to rise from the grave and the Bible says that they then believed uh, 
in him. You say, didn't they believe in him already? I believe they believed in him already. They were saved. They were baptized. Uh, but it sure increased their faith, didn't it? You start reading the prophecies and those things in Scripture, and it's amazing. The word of God that God's given us. And it stands head and shoulders above any other book uh, that has ever been written. Uh, look at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. This is a Bible study this morning. Uh, some different passages, but Luke chapter 24. Verse number 36. Here in verse 36, the Bible says, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, saith unto them, Peace be unto you. So he's been crucified, buried. Now it's the three days later, he's risen again. All of a sudden he appears there in the room with them. Verse 37, But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they'd seen a spirit. We'd call it a ghost. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for I, a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. So they let him touch his hands. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet, and while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? They gave him a piece of a broiled fish and a honeycomb, and he took it and eat, did eat before them. Why, a spirit's not going to eat either. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And the repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Why is it that God would desire to increase our faith? We might be witnesses of these things. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing to have a weak faith, but, you know, as your faith grows, you, you, you have more confidence to tell others because you know it's true. Uh, you know it's true. It increases uh, your faith like to look at three different classifications of people. There is a group of people today that are willfully ignorant. Willfully, no, no matter what evidence you show, you know, Jesus said, even if uh, one come back from the dead, you'll not believe. Uh, he told that to the Pharisees. There are those that are willfully ignorant. No matter what evidence they have, they're not going to believe in Jesus Christ. They're not going to become a Christian. They're not going to believe the things of the word of God. They just set some place in their mind I'm not going to believe regardless. I'm not going to believe. And uh, uh, so so you can give them stuff to read. You can talk to them. Uh, you know, the, the statement that you're blue in the face. You you can uh, you you can uh, you know uh, whatever you want. But but they've just said in their heart someplace. I'm not going to believe. Uh, and so uh, regardless of what's out there, regardless of the evidence, I'm not going to believe. And then there's a, a second group of people that wants to believe. Uh, wants to believe. There's that hope that death isn't I mean, that death isn't the end. Uh, why? Because loved ones have gone on to eternity. Uh, there's that hope that there's a forgiveness of my sins. Why? Because I'm, uh, you know, a guilty before God. Uh, there's that hope that uh, that, uh, you know, that there is an eternal life in a place called heaven and a loving God who would uh, who would desire to forgive my sins and to save me. And and so there's there, there's some hope of that. And and so they're saying, uh, give me something to believe. Give me something to believe. And and uh, and, uh, you know, the. the the prophecies that God gave that we might have belief. Uh, isn't God good? God could have just uh, sent his son to die for us and, and then just left us there and said, okay, you don't want to believe, fine. God doesn't do that, does he? In fact, he sometimes keeps sending people to come back to us and we get mad. You ever try to witness to somebody and they shout at you? Uh, it happens. Why don't you Christians leave me alone? Isn't that a good God that loves somebody that would want the gospel to go to them even when they get upset? Uh, would still uh, you, you can shake your fist at God. There's testimonies of people who have cursed God and yet still God saved them. 
came to a time they realized Jesus Christ is a savior and they uh, they came and they trusted him as their personal savior and still got saved. Paul was one of those, wasn't he? He said, I'm the chiefest of sinners. And why? Because uh, his his goal in life was to track down and imprison and have put to death Christians. And then one day he met Jesus. And, uh, you know, there is as he met Jesus and, and, uh, and God used this statement, he says, Paul or Saul, he called him at that time. Uh, why kickest thou against the pricks? You know, what the pricks are it's that sharp iron stake that would stick out from behind the plow that every time that ox would try to get stubborn and try to kick his ankle would hit that and it would hurt. So he'd behave himself and uh, that prick is that sharp point. It would stick you and it would hurt. And he tells Paul, why are you kicking against the pricks? In other words, I've been pricking you. I've been trying to get you to believe. I've been trying to get you to hear and to listen and and uh, uh, to understand and to uh, to realize that I am the savior. And and uh, why are you kicking against the pricks? He says it this way in Revelations three, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Trying to get your attention. Uh, I, I still believe there's people today that, that want to believe. Um, they want to believe. Uh, you know, God's given us the prophecies, and Judas was one of those. Uh, we don't look at Judas as being one of those positive prophecies, do we? Uh, why he betrays Christ. But God knew he was going to, and God spoke of it. Now, why would God tell us that? Because he wants us to believe. Uh, he wants us to realize that the details and things in God's word are true. Why? Because we're born again of not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible of the word of God. It's the Bible that tells us that Jesus Christ is the savior that we can trust in him. Evidence of things not seen. Prophecies. Look at first John chapter five. First John chapter number five. First John chapter five, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God. So who is he writing to? Christians. He says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God. First John chapter five, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Remember the young man, that, or I don't know if he's young or not, but the man that brought his son to Jesus and asked Jesus to heal him, and he said, if you believe, and he says, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. You ever been that place? Maybe as the apostles, as they were dealing with forgiveness seven times 70 in a day, and, and uh, they said, Lord, increase our faith. How is that done? The fulfillment of prophecy. Here we find him speaking to Christians who already believe, and he said, these things have I written unto you that you uh, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. You ever struggled with assurance? Uh, I, I, when I, when I first got saved, I was seven years old. I uh, went forward in a church service and knew that I was a sinner and needed Jesus Christ, and I asked Him to save me. And uh, I would, uh, the weeks after that, in church, sit in the pew, and the pastor would, uh, would, uh, uh, you know, give opportunities, and he'd say, if if, if you, uh, you know, there's some doubt if Jesus Christ is your Savior, you can pray with me. I don't know how many times I prayed what's called the sinner's prayer. Uh, why well, I just wanted to make sure I, I, it was too good to be true. Besides that, I'd sinned since last time, and uh, you only have to ask Christ to save you one time, and he he's not hard of hearing, uh, and he's not distracted because the Bible says that that that's the most inter uh, in the the uh, the, the uh, uh, he ever lives to make intercession for you. Uh, that's the desire of his day. 
Uh, right now, he's listening. If there's someone here that's not saved, and, and he's waiting and hoping that you'll call upon him as your Savior. It's not like, you know, God's distracted and, oh, he didn't hear you, so you need to tell him again. Uh, but we lack assurance sometimes, don't we? Uh, it's too good to be true. How could God save me? Uh, is the word of God true? And, you know, as we uh, we uh, read the, the prophecies and the fulfillment of those things, uh, I believe our faith is going to get stronger in these last days. As we see God's word being fulfilled before our eyes. You know, there's going to be multitudes saved in the tribulation period. Why? Because they're going to have the book of Revelations. And it'll be like the daily newspaper, won't it? But, you know, there's things in the daily newspaper today, isn't there? Does not the Bible say that the end times are going to be like the days of Lot? The days of Lot. Those things that are going on that sometimes we think are discouraging us. And, and uh, you know, it's, uh, and they are discouraging. Uh, what was the day of Lot? Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, w w but, but, but when we begin to see those things being fulfilled that God said, uh, that, uh, you know, it doesn't have to just discourage us, but it can get us looking up and realize Jesus is coming soon. And it can encourage our faith and strengthen us, saying this is the word of God. God knew it all along. Uh, God knew it all along. And, and uh, now we're, we're seeing so many things fulfilled uh, in, in our lifetime. I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Look at John chapter 16. John chapter number 16. Here in verse number one, the gospel of John. We were in first John. Now back to the gospel of John. This is the last place I'll have you turn this morning. OK, so. Uh, hopefully I haven't lost you yet, but it's good to do Bible study. Uh, you know, we uh, we uh, we need to see these these things from the word of God. In John chapter 16, verse Verse number one, the Bible says, these things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me. Difference between faith in Jesus and religion. So again there in verse three, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come. You may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go to my uh, go go my way to him that sent me and none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you sorrow hath filled your heart and nevertheless I tell you the truth but uh, just noting there in verse number four these things I've told you that when the time shall come you may remember that I told you of them it might encourage your faith uh, these are the things that God spoke of three groups of people you have the one group that they're willfully ignorant no matter what God does they're not going to believe uh, they're just not uh, it might be a, a, a tragedy in their life. It could be the, what they were taught growing up. It uh, could just be pride itself. Uh, the Bible says knowledge puffeth up. Uh, and uh, it could be education. But, uh, but no matter, n regardless, they're just not going to believe. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, you look in Jesus' day and the Pharisees and, and uh, you know, they come and said, show us a sign. He just got done, you know, uh, giving a, a blind man sight and uh, uh, and they were getting ready to stone him for it. And and uh, because it was on the Sabbath day. And and, and if you read the preceding uh, chapters, he just done miracle after miracle after miracle. And they come and said, Lord, show us a sign. And that's why he said there, you know, even if one comes back from the dead, you won't believe. Uh, in other words, regardless of what God, what evidence God gives, you're not going to believe. Uh, there are, you know, those that are just willfully ignorant. The Bible speaks to those in the last time, be willfully ignorant. Uh, it, it, it's their choice. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to know the truth. Then there's a group that hopes that it's true. Uh, they're seeking the truth. Hope that it, hopes that it's true. 
uh, evidence. You know, uh, there says the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Judas is one of those. Judas did, just as David said back in Psalm 49, uh, eating bread with Christ, lifted up his heel against him. And fulfilling that prophecy, that's just one of many to show you that this is the word of God. God is saying to you today, I am real. My son Jesus Christ is the Savior. If you'd ask me, I'll save you. The Bible says neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. There's only one Savior, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. One who's died for our sins. And if you'd ask him today, he'd save you. And then there's the Christian who would come and say, Lord, increase my faith. Don't you need a stronger faith? Uh, increase my faith. As you're reading the word of God and as you're seeing the events and things take place today, as you go to pray and you see God answer prayer, what's God doing? He's increasing your faith, isn't he? Uh, my faith is increased. Uh, I praise the Lord. You, many people in this world may not get too excited about two services. Uh, you know, there and, and just, uh, uh, and I believe it's because God did it. And uh, please pray that he'll continue to keep that door open. And, and uh, not only we get two services, we had invitations in both services. And, and men prayed to receive Christ as their Savior in both services here in the jail. Uh, the only way we're going to change this world is through Jesus Christ. And it can be one soul at a time. Every time someone gets saved, it's a victory. And uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, organizations and programs of this world are not going to change the hearts of men. Uh, it's going to be Jesus Christ. Lord, increase our faith. Uh, how does God increase his, your faith? Get into the Word of God and begin to read it and study it and, and uh, uh, walk with God. Sweeter as the days go by. Uh, as you uh, daily seek God for wisdom, as you begin to see God work in your life, your faith is going to increase and it's going to grow. If you're not saved, please today come to Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe at some time in the past you've set in your mind, I'm not going to believe. Regardless, I'm not going to believe. I, I, I'd pray for you today that, uh, you know, God can change that heart. Paul was so sure that he was right that he was willing to have Christians put to death for his belief that he was right. Uh, I meet people today that would like to do that. Uh, but maybe if you just open your heart to God and say, well, maybe it is true. Maybe I better check this out, see if it's true. Maybe there's one of those today you're coming saying, I hope it's true. And today you'd come to Christ as your Savior. Let's stand as we have the invitation this morning. I didn't get to point three. We'll get to that next week. But Baby Christians gathered together. There Christ gives them the instruction to go out and win the world. What do they do? They go and have a prayer meeting and begin to pray for God to use them. While they're praying, God shows them some things in the scripture. And what do they do? Simple obedience. They just act upon it. But they're in the process of all that. They recognize God fulfilled prophecy there in Judas. Lord, increase our faith. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this morning. I, I do thank you, Lord. I, I, uh, I hate so many of the things going on in our nation today. And, and uh, Father, just uh, uh, I know that America is on shaky ground. That, uh, Lord, we, uh, uh, we've just uh, disregarded, uh, Lord, your word. And, and uh, uh, Father, I know that it's, uh, for Christians, it's, it, it's a little bit frightening to think of what's, what's ahead, what's coming. And, and uh, yet, Lord, our uh, our trust is where it's always been. It's never been in the nation. It's always been in you. And uh, Father, we, we, we might be uh, lights uh, in, this, uh, in this country for your testimony. I pray, Father, that as there's uh, uh, Christian people and good churches across this land praying for our country, we bring revival. Uh, Lord, that you would uh, just be merciful and long-suffering with America. And uh, Father, I do pray we continue to see souls saved in the days that we live. 
Lord, I ask that you would uh, increase our faith. And Father, as we go through these times, it's not a time for a weak faith. We, we need to uh, understand that, uh, that persecution's coming. And, and uh, Father, for those who will stand upon your word, and, and uh, we'd not compromise. But, uh, Lord, this, test, this world needs a testimony of the truth. I, uh, I just pray that, uh, Lord, we would uh, we'd be more zealous to, uh, to share the gospel. And, and uh, Lord, uh, our testimony, and realize the importance of it uh, in the days we live, that, uh, Lord, we might uh, reach out and, and uh, share Christ with, uh, with those that will want to hear. Father, I pray for uh, those today that don't know you as their Savior. Uh, if you could just uh, prick their heart again, knock on that door one more time. And Lord, this morning, uh, they would surrender and come and ask you to save them. Thank you, Father, for the, uh, the uh, message this morning. And, and uh, just bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.